Question number eight, the Honourable Judith Collins. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Minister of Transport. Uh, order, order. I think, I think, Nick Smith and Megan Woods might have sort of. Or was it was it you? So I apologise. I've just, i just, I think I get um, acclimatised to Smith, Dr. Smith, and think it's him. Uh, can, can, can the pair, pair of you be quiet? We'll call that even, and we'll go to the Honourable Judith Collins without interruption from either side of the house. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the Minister of Transport, from what source and in what proportions is the National Land Transport Fund funded? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The current government policy statement on land transport, revised in February 2017 by the past government, requires revenue raised from the land transport system to be used for land transport purposes. All revenue from fuel excise duty, road user charges, motor vehicle registration and licensing fees, revenue from Crown appropriations, management of Crown land interests and tolling are accounted for in the National Land Transport Fund. The fund's revenue for 2016-17 was comprised of 52 per cent fuel excise duty, 40 per cent road user charges and 8 per cent motor vehicle registration and other revenue. Why did he tell the New Zealand public that the National Land Transport funding for roads would not be redirected to rail when he had already written to some stakeholders saying that the government is, quote, exploring how rail investment is incorporated within the government policy statement and the National Land Transport Fund, end quote. Well, to clarify for the member, what I said was that funding for a particular project or funding band for different transport modes in the National Land Transport Programme cannot be changed by the government of the day. Those decisions are made at arm's length by the NZTA board. However, a new government with a new enlightened transport policy can set new priorities and change the funding bands in the land transport programme. And so that is exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> well, Mr. Speaker, the Lord loves a try, don't they? <laughs> to the Minister, as the Ministry of Transport states, if as the Ministry of Transport states, 100% pretty much of the National Land Transport Fund is paid for by car and truck owners, should they expect this money to be spent on roads? Well, Mr. Speaker, um, like all other um, order, roads, like all other transport <laughs> modes, are funded from a variety of sources. Local ratepayers, for example, contribute $1.7 billion in the current three-year period. And yet some people seem to believe that road taxes should only be spent on roads. The member's argument is totally illogical. Point of order. A point of order. The Honourable Thank Jennifer you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the question was very clearly about the funding that comes from into and from the National Land Transport Fund, not local roads, which are paid for primarily by ratepayers. Can the minister please address the question correctly? Uh, I, I, I thought he came. I thought he addressed it. I mean, he mightn't have answered it, but he addressed it. Supplementary, Mr. Speaker. Jamie Strange, and he won't be stared down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've had the look, Mr. Speaker. Uh, does the government intend change in the past government's requirement that funds in the National Land Transport Fund be spent for land transport purposes? Thank you. The new government policy statement on land transport for 2018 is being worked on, and we aim to have the draft GPS out for consultation in March. However, the current requirement that revenue raised from the transport system be spent on land transport aligns perfectly with this government's ambition for funding a badly needed rapid transit system for Auckland that will make a serious dent in traffic gridlock unlocking massive productivity gains, and so that requirement's very unlikely to change. Thank you. Why should road users nationwide, who contribute $3 billion a year specifically for roading, 
watch this Labour New Zealand First Government spend it on an Auckland tram up Dominion Road. Mr Speaker, I would have thought that the member would know that rail delivers $1.3 billion a year in reduced road congestion. It saves $63 million a year in road maintenance. The Northern Busway, built by the former Labour-led government, has taken four lanes of traffic off the Harbour Bridge every morning. Surely she can see that that's good for motorists. Is the Minister prepared to confirm that the independent New Zealand Transport Agency that oversees how the $3 billion paid for by New Zealand-wide road users will still be able to operate independently from the government when the Prime Minister's mentor, the Honourable Dame Annette King, is appointed to the chair of the New Zealand Transport Agency Board? All I can say, Mr Speaker, is that that member is um, sadly misinformed. Question number nine, Andrew Warren Clark. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question